Dude, if James Bond and Tony Stark had a love child, this is what it would look like. I mean, it would make for one ugly as hell human, but would also make for a beastly, sharp looking and feature packed gaming laptop. Right, down to business. So I finally managed to get my hands on the MSI GS65 Stealth Fin 8RF. Man, I hate how brands name their laptops. Anyways, as the name pretty clearly implies, it's thin and light, has an all aluminum case and looks wicked minimalistic with a nice touch of class. So if you're totally out of shape like me, you shouldn't have too much trouble lugging this around although I do still struggle from time to time. Uh, it's got a sweet matte black paint job that unfortunately does collect fingerprints fairly easily, like a porn star at a meet and greet, but because there's no texturing, it's really easy to clean. There's some nice gold accents on the MSI Dragon logo, vents, display trim, uh, hinges, audio ports, and even the power port center pin. Nice touch, MSI, I dig it. But it's not real gold, so don't go wearing it around your neck like your Flava Flav. I hate that guy. Now, when it comes to gaming laptops, I prefer having as many ports on the backside as possible, but there was no way they were gonna get that done on something this small. So on the left side, we've got a lock slot, gigabit ethernet, two USB 3.1 ports, and a couple of audio ports. On the right, we've got another USB 3.1, a Thunderbolt 3 port, noise, mini display port, HDMI, and of course, our power port. So I think it looks great. It looks like a solid laptop, but when you actually handle it, you start to feel and hear creaks and cracks. I mean, you press down anywhere and it makes noise. You open the lid, it makes noise. It's like listening to an old man stand up. It's not pleasant. For maintenance and upgradability, we're looking at something a little outside the norm, uh, a flipped motherboard. So all we get immediate access to is the battery, fans, and the killer network wireless card. To get to all the goodies like the CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage, you gotta tear down even further to flip it, being careful not to mangle all the tiny connector cables everywhere along the way. And seeing as this is a review unit, there is no way I was about to start that adventure just for a few seconds of B-roll. But if you do decide to go all Kanye West on it, you'll see you have two DIMM slots and two M.2 SSD slots. Now what we're looking at here is an 80 watt hour battery. MSI claims it'll provide eight plus hours, but with actual real world usage, I was seeing something more along the lines of six to six and a half hours. And as expected, just under an hour, hour and a half while gaming. Now lifting the lid, look at those bezels. It's as thin as my hairline. That's why I like hats. And even with those thin bezels, they still manage to stuff in a webcam at the top. That's impressive. Too bad it's 720p and still sucks like all the other laptop webcams do. <laughs> it's got a 15 inch 1080p IPS display with a max manufacturer brightness rating of 300 nits, although it looks more like 260, 270. Uh, color accuracy is pretty decent at 99% sRGB and 77% Adobe RGB. It's not the best, but I think it's good enough to do some photo or video editing, maybe not for professionals whose jobs depend on it, but good enough for most. And with an awesome refresh rate of 140 44 hertz and decent colors, you're gonna get a great media consumption experience and an even better gaming experience. More on that in a minute. The compact chiclet style keyboard is pretty good. The key travels a little shallower than I prefer at 1.4 millimeters. I like them deep. But I love the per key RGB lighting with bright, vibrant colors that can all be adjusted using the SteelSeries app. The touchpad is a nice gold trim and the surface is very smooth. There is no dedicated mouse buttons. It's all in the touchpad, which I prefer, but at the expense of click accuracy. And even though it's using Synaptics drivers, I haven't had any issues with accuracy in that regard. So overall, I'm I'm happy with it. Like most laptops, the speakers are downward facing, but they actually sound pretty decent for being such tiny little bastards. I still wouldn't recommend relying on them while gaming, but for content, they sound great, better than most. Not that they produce some incredible lows and mids, just well-balanced sound. So gaming performance, yeah man. Playing AAA titles at maxed out settings is very much possible. But with CPU temps reaching as high as 92 degrees Celsius, thermal throttling is holding us back from achieving enough FPS to really take advantage of that 144 Hertz display, at least at max graphic settings. Now, there is a cooler boost feature for the fans that ramps those fuckers up pretty high, but personally, I didn't actually notice any temperature differences. Okay, maybe like one or two degrees, but even then, I'd still see temperature numbers fluctuating back and forth to what I see with cooler boost off. Regardless, you're still gonna see FPS numbers well above 60, and even when it does throttle, which is like almost instantly under load, I never actually noticed frame drops that affected my gameplay or experience. And since Cooler Boost doesn't seem to do shit here, 
Throw it in auto mode and you'll notice the fan noise lower than like 95% of gaming laptops in the same class which is really nice. Um, I just wouldn't recommend overclocking the GPU, even though you can. Otherwise, you'll probably notice some thermal throttling over and above what the CPU is already doing. So just leave all that shit alone and just stick with the preset performance boost modes. So wrapping up, uh, my review unit's configuration has an Intel i7-8750H, the 8 gig GTX 1070 Max-Q, 32 gigs of RAM, and a single 512 gig SSD, which comes in at a bit under $2,400. There is a bunch of different configs available. Like I think you could probably sacrifice the 32 gigs of RAM for only 16 and save a couple hundred bucks. But either way, it's not the most affordable gaming laptop, but it is one of the thinnest, sexiest, and lightest out there. Anyways, drop me a comment and let me know what you think of the new look MSI has gone with and if the small dip in performance due to throttling is an acceptable sacrifice for the size and fan noise reduction. But if you like the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new to my stuff, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks as always for watching and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.